The Wooden Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic and Typebond. So Nicole and I are sharing an office again, and unfortunately she's working on a folding table. And I think we could do one better than that. So that's what this is. It's Nicole's new desk. Now you might see a little bit of mid-century modern influence in it, but I gotta tell you, most of the influence on this piece comes from Star Trek. I've just been watching tons of old Star Trek and sort of the angular designs that are featured in that show and the, very, uh, the various shows uh, kind of made its way into this piece. And I had this angle in my mind for the legs and then translated that angle throughout the entire piece. So thankfully, Nicole's not too picky about the design. She said, just have fun with it. As long as it's got a big top, some shelves and a drawer, I'm happy. So fortunately, I had a lot of experimentation on this piece. I took that angle throughout, including even in this drawer with angled sides, right? So a lot of it's not maybe the most practical and in some cases, maybe not the strongest way to build something. But you know what, it's fun. It's fun to kind of just break through the mold and do something cool and just have a good time while you're doing it. All right, so this video is actually going to be a little bit different than we've been doing lately. Uh, if you've seen me mention the guild, that's where we do super detailed projects. And a lot of times people wonder how much more detail is in there. Well, that's what this video is like. It's still a little bit shorter than a guild project, but you get the idea of how much detail goes into each one of these projects, showing you every step of the process, and most importantly, where my head's at, why I made certain decisions, and then how I addressed issues as they came up, all right? So it's gonna be a good one. Stick around. I think you're gonna like it. Now I'm gonna start the project with the legs. Of course, we have four of those. So ideally, if we can get them all onto the same board, that just means that the grain will match, the color will match. Uh, so that's what I have here. It's a big piece of eight quarter. Looks like I can get four legs kind of all within the same area. So grain match should be pretty darn good. And by the way, I get a lot of questions about this. Uh, charcoal pencil, this is general brand, and this is not an ad, you can find these on Amazon. Uh, this is what I use to mark on dark woods like this. Doesn't always work. Sometimes if it's a smooth piece of wood, it won't work that well, but for rough layout, it's pretty good. I'll first cut the stock down at the chop saw. I like to take multiple passes when working with rough material. This can help reduce the chance of pinching the blade. Each leg is rough ripped at the bandsaw. Now I can mill the legs up nice and square. Each piece is ripped to final width at the table saw. The final length is established at the chop saw using a stop block. So with the leg blanks milled up, we can now start to shape them. Uh, the legs are actually gonna be at, what did I make it, a 56 degree angle roughly, uh, under the tabletop. So that introduces an angle at the top and the bottom that allows it to tilt. But we also have a taper, right? So it's not just this sort of rectangular shape, it's actually going to be slightly tapered. Now you can cut the taper first or you can cut the ends at the appropriate angle first. Personally, I think it's gonna be easier to cut the taper first than do the ends. So I am going to measure out here and while I have a degree associated with the tilt of the legs, I actually think it's a lot easier to operate with as few angles as possible. So we don't have to worry about mixing numbers up. Sometimes you measure an angle, but the number on the tool is not the number that you have in your head because you're on the other side, right? The other part that makes up a 90 degree angle. So it, it tends to get confusing. Anyway, what we're gonna do is measure the width of the leg at the bottom, which is about an inch and a quarter. If you want something different, pick something different. Right, and we're gonna go up from there to the top of the leg at its widest point, which is just the end of the blank, three and a half inches. And now we can head to the table saw with a tapering jig. Always mark your waist too. Any tapering jig will work, or you could use the bandsaw and clean up the edge with a hand plane or jointer. This particular jig is a collaboration project that I did with my buddy Andy Klein. Keep an eye out for plans for this one pretty soon. Now when it's time to cut your angles on the ends, it's not a bad idea to take a angle gauge and set it for the proper angle. In this case, we're going for about 56 degrees. So I've got a protractor here, got that set up, 
and you lock this guy in because you might be able to use this for tool setups uh, moving forward. Uh, that said, we may as well just draw in some lines so you could see what we're trying to do here, though if you have your saw set up to the right angle, you don't even need lines. Anyway, this is the square side, and this is the tapered side. We're going to continue measuring from the squared side. Right, so at this end, we can draw our angle in like so. Keep the angle gauge the same way, and draw that one. So I'm going to make my cuts at the miter saw, I find that easiest. You could certainly use a table saw if you want to. And if you just set yourself here to the angle, the 56 degrees, right on the saw, you're going to have the wrong angle. And I know that sounds weird, but you have to think from the saw's perspective, it's actually moving a smaller amount. So the way you could double check yourself is with a bevel gauge, right? We have this already set. So if we set that to the angle, set the blade to the angle of the bevel gauge, and you look at that number, the number is actually 34. Right? Well, this is because you're looking at a 90 degree angle here, and 56 plus another 34 brings us to that 90. So from the saw's perspective, it's only moving 34 degrees to make that cut. But the wood that's left over is actually 56 degrees. So with the stop block in place, I can make all of the foot cuts. Now we have to cut the top of the leg. And the less you have to mess with this angle, the better. So I'm gonna keep the saw exactly where it is. So instead of going to the other side of 90 here, I'm actually just gonna slide my workpiece over and just use the same angle, like this. And I have to move my stop. All right, so the legs are looking pretty good. But you know, I'm not totally happy with it. And unfortunately, this is something that can happen when you design in a 3D environment, a digital environment. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to appreciate the exact thickness of something or how a particular proportion will work out. Uh, when you see it in person, in real material, that's when the flaws can sometimes show themselves. So the problem I'm having is I feel like this foot needs to be a little bit thinner. I feel like the, there's just not enough drama here, right? And I think when you're, when you're doing a sort of mid-century modern inspired piece, one of the risks you run is having clunky looking pieces, right? You could be too thick, you could stay a little bit too thick down at a foot when you should really taper out to something really fine. So that's kind of what I'm afraid I've done here. Now, fortunately I can take a little bit more off of here fairly easily using a tapering sled. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but I don't think this is a decision I want to make right now. It's at the end of my work day. I'm kind of brain tired at this point. So I'm better off sitting on this idea, maybe asking Nicole what she thinks, getting some other opinions, and then coming in here tomorrow with a fresh set of eyes and a fresh cup of coffee and deciding if I want to take that additional material off. So I'll see you tomorrow. Captain's Log, Stardate 98211.6. After meeting with my senior officers, I decided to leave the legs as designed by the Federation. So that's about as far as we're going to take the legs at this point. We've got joinery to add, a few more details to shape them, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Now we need to work on some of the thinner stock that makes up the aprons, the drawer compartment, all that stuff. Uh, so I have a piece that was cut off from the leg stock. A piece of this size, I mean, you might be able to use it for something, but a lot of times with this short length, there's not a whole lot that I could do with it. So it's great if you have a bandsaw because that allows you to resaw this and get as much three quarter inch material out of it as you can. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna recoup as much material from here as possible and anything that I can't get from there, I'm just gonna get from this piece of four quarter. <laughs> Now with all these parts to the appropriate thickness, they're still oversized in width and length and we will strategically break them down just in a way that makes sense and sort of consolidates things. So if we have a bunch of bevel cuts, do all the bevels at the same time. If some things have to be to the same width, cut those at the same time. So we're gonna start out with our three apron parts and our drawer back because all of those are the same width. The aprons can also be cut to length now, adding the appropriate 56 degree miters to the ends. 
On the front aprons, the miters go in the same direction. We'll cut the drawer support pieces to length now too. And these get 90 degree ends. And don't cut the drawer sides yet, we keep those oversized in length for now. Before moving on, now's a real good time to just double check and make sure all of your angles offset one another. So the aprons should drop in like this, leaving you with a line at the top that's parallel with the line at the foot. And that looks pretty good. So next up, we need to cut bevels in some of our pieces, specifically the drawer sides, because our drawer is gonna sit at this kind of weird angle, at least the sides will, and the drawer support pieces, they also sit at that odd angle. So in order for this to work and for them to sit inside the desk, we need a bevel on each side. Now at the same time, when we're cutting this bevel, we'll cut it to its final width, and we will actually take it against some of our actual pieces to make sure that we have the width that we need. So I've got my blade here tilted to our 56 degrees. Again, if you are looking at the saw, it's gonna be set to 34 degrees, or you can just use your angle gauge, right? Once you're there, then you wanna set your fence a little bit wide of the cut. You don't wanna to try to hit it on the first shot. All we're gonna do is put a bevel on one edge first and then see how we did with the actual work pieces. Now to test this, I just have my back apron here and one of the front apron pieces nice and flush on both sides. They should be the same width. I just have it clamped in place. This piece, the drawer support, we really wanna make sure that it's up against this edge we're gonna put our freshly cut bevel facing down here and make sure that's flush as well. When we're in this position, at this point, we should have some overhanging material. That's the other bevel. So you can take a pencil and just kind of draw a line. And what we're gonna do is sneak up on it until we have flush surfaces on both the top and bottom. And when we drop the piece in like this and you're flush on the bottom, flush on the top, then you know you've got the right fit. So we can go and cut the remaining parts. And one important thing I forgot to mention is my fence. My regular fence actually has just a little bit of a gap. It's got a rounded corner on it. So when I flip this guy over to make the second cut, I've got the pointy part of my bevel down, right? So if I'm trying to register off of that, that could be bad news. It's not really gonna give me good registration. So I have this extra auxiliary fence that I use. It's my tall fence, not using it for the height, but for the fact that it really closes up that gap for me and makes this cup possible. Now we can start to actually put our pieces together with some joinery. So to make things really simple for myself here, I'm gonna use loose mortise and tendon joints. These are specifically dominoes. Uh, this is the eight by 50, eight by 40 size. So the idea is we need to find out where the center of our dominoes are and we're gonna plunge them into the center of the leg and the center of the aprons. So when I bring one of my front apron pieces up here, I'm gonna have it flush just for the sake of making it easy to use a pencil. And you can see these dominoes, I've kind of given them a center line in width and a center line along its length. That allows me to just kind of line them up across this joint and see how they're gonna lay out. You wanna be careful not to go near one of the uh, edges because that won't look very good if you punch through. And I'm gonna transfer their center line. Now that little tick mark, I could just extend going perpendicular to the joint. So now I'm gonna take another piece, make sure everything is flush at the top, as flush as it can be, and then I'm gonna transfer our pencil lines to the other piece. And we could pretty much repeat the process if we wanted to, or knowing that these should all be kind of the same, right? We can take the side that's gonna receive the joinery, butt that up against the piece we already marked out. And we could take a little shortcut here by transferring those marks. And check this out, same thing with our legs. Make sure they are aligned at the top, transfer the marks. Now you're gonna repeat this exact process on the rear set of legs, and the only difference is we actually have an apron that's one piece. But we should be able to use our two existing apron pieces to mark this guy up.
Now I'll just bring the rear legs in, make sure everything is oriented the way I think it should be, and then use my front legs to do a mark transfer. So I've set the domino to cut at the dead center point, or at least as close as I can get. And all I need to do is line up with these two marks and make my mortises. Now, if you're looking at me using the domino and thinking, well, that must be nice if you have a domino, uh, but there are other more classic ways to do this. It's just called slip mortise and tenon or loose mortise and tenon joinery. And I actually have a video out there showing you exactly how to make loose mortise and tenons on angled pieces like this, miters, bevels, everything you could think of. And all you need is a router, a straight bit, and an edge guide. So go check out that video if you don't happen to have a domino or something like it. Now for the leg mortises, I've got to find the center point of the leg. And then I just change the settings on the fence on the domino. All right, so I'm just going to do a little bit of test assembly, make sure everything is doing what it's supposed to be doing. I'm looking for this to be flush at the top. Also flush. Okay, and these two together make up the front with a gap in the middle for the drawer. So that looks exactly as it should. Let's see what we can do here for the rear side. It's looking like it should. It's nice and centered on the leg. Everything comes together. So now we can move on to making some more mortises. Now, even though we are using the domino here, it's by no means simple or on easy mode. There are some things we really have to be careful with. So if we look at our front leg, at least one of our legs and our little partial apron here, uh, this assembly will come together and then we're gonna have the drawer compartment start here. So the pieces that we cut with the bevels on them, those are going to join up to the back of this apron. So that joint right there is one that we have to align for and cut the mortises for. So I'm gonna take this piece out, remove the leg to make it easier, and it will just work with these two pieces, but also be doing the mirror image, same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna go like this, and that should just make it a little bit easier for me to draw my lines. And this one I'm just gonna do by eye. We've got plenty of room to play here. Now if I could use a set of adjustable squares, set one up, for each one of those marks, make it a little bit easier to share these marks with the other pieces. That includes the back of the support piece. And we can even use them on the other side. Now, once again, I'm going to set up for a cut that's halfway through the thickness. And I almost screwed up. This is definitely a concern with the domino. Uh, these pieces are coming together like this. So you have to be careful. If you put something that goes equal distance, uh, depth into both pieces, you end up possibly pushing through this front apron piece. So we're going to have to offset this one. And depending on the settings on a domino, either way, we have to equal 40 millimeters. So I could just go, uh, yeah, let's say 25, 25 this way, 15 that way, will be offset, and that should be safe enough. Okay, now for these guys, we gotta go vertical, set up for that shallow cut. Okay, now for the real test. Put some dominoes. Okay, these guys come together. Hopefully you're flush at the top. And also, you wanna be nice and smooth in here because a drawer is gonna go in and out of there. We're gonna have a drawer slide attached to that inside surface. So 
There's one. Not exactly balanced, but you get the idea. Oh yeah. So that in conjunction with our legs on the outsides pretty much takes care of that drawer compartment with the exception of what happens at the rear because we have a back piece that goes in place here, a back apron. And uh, well, we have to figure out a way to transfer these marks to that. So I'm gonna think about it for a minute. All right, so I did give it some thought and I think I have an idea. I've got a leg in place here. You can kind of see how this is gonna be arranged in the final desk. And what we're looking to figure out is where to put the domino. What is the reference surface? So we know that this outside face of the apron here or the face of the drawer compartment, that is where we were measuring from. But how do I know exactly where that is? Now I could certainly measure with a tape measure, put a line there, try to line up the domino, but that's not gonna be nearly as accurate as I want it to be. Fortunately, we have other parts to our project that kind of can be stand-ins to let us know where we need to place this tool. So I have my other partial apron here. The point where this intersects with the back apron, it's gonna be the same in the front as it is in the back. So if I take this guy, make that flush on the end grain, right about there, right, where this lines up, under here is where we're gonna to have to place our dominoes. So how do I translate that reference surface you know, to something else that I can actually use with the domino tool? Well, if we have this held in place like that, all I need to do is make sure I'm really perfectly flush out there. Then I could take a piece of scrap material, line that right up against that workpiece, butt it up, clamp it down, right? When I remove this, I'm now referencing off of that outside surface. That's my reference line. And then the domino tool can come in like so to make our mortises, All right? So that's pretty much the strategy. Now I just have to transfer the two lines off of the workpiece and then we'll be good to go. Now I can kind of mark these out at the same time. I've got the right one on the right side, the left one on the left side, and my marks that I previously used to align the joinery, I could use those now. Want some flush here on the outside. And if you're unsure about if you actually are flush, just grab one of your other work pieces. Bring that up against the apron. And go like that. Now transfer my marks. Now after this step, I'm gonna put something else here. So I need to be able to see these marks. I'm gonna extend them a little bit, try to find that same angle. As long as they're close, it should be fine. All right, so the clamping on this is gonna get a little messy, but you just do what you can. Keep everything where it needs to be. Use a hold fast for that. Second piece comes in. You're gonna need something to support that second piece on its long end. And really the most important thing about this piece is that it's square right here. Push it right up against there. One additional clamp. Okay, and now I can just reference off the bottom. Now I've got the front cobbled together again. This is the real test is to see if everything lines up with these parts in place. I'll do this test on both sides, but I'm only gonna show you once. It's a little wonky here, but I think it's because of the way my angle is set on my leg. Oh yeah. Well, that's much better. <laughs> All right, so success. It's looking pretty good.